Hello everybody, welcome to this lecture, Grandmaster Choice. Uh, this is Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Goenga, and it's a great pleasure, as usual, to be here with all of you guys. And uh, what are we gonna do today? Well, I'm gonna provide you with an extremely dangerous repertoire against the French defense, and in particular against the Fort Knox variation. So, just uh, hello to everybody there in the chat, in the YouTube chat. I'll be paying attention uh, to the YouTube chat all the time. So I hope this uh, will be an interactive lecture. So um, you guys can uh, provide uh, a lot of suggestions. I'll be asking you some questions as well. Um, hopefully we'll have some fun. So I'm gonna check if, so, yes, everything's fine regarding audio and video. Mm. My face is my face. I cannot fix. I cannot fix that. But <laughs> at least you can hear me properly, and uh, you can see something, right? So, okay. Uh, what is the Fort Knox variation? It's one of the most solid uh, approaches uh, for the black pieces uh, when you are when you are when somebody is playing the French. Okay. So let's start. So e4, e6. This is the uh, French defense. And uh, just one second, guys. So, just one second, and we are ready to go. Okay, so e4, e6, d4, d5, this is the French defense here, and uh, there are different options here. You can play the advanced uh, variation with e5, the exchange variation with e takes d5. Even bishop d3 is a very interesting move, but the two main moves are by far knight c3 or knight d2. Knight d2. Uh, it's called the Tarash variation. Uh, after knight c3, black can try to play knight f6 going for the classical French. Also, bishop b4, the Vinauer variation. Extremely difficult to understand as well. Okay, but the point is, after knight c3 or knight d2, black can take on e4, knight takes e4, and bishop d7. This is the so-called Fort Knox variation. What is black intending to do here in this position? Well, in many cases, black is going to bring this bishop to c6. It's going to put a lot of pressure on e4. And at some point, there's going to be a knight on f3. And in many positions, black will take this knight on f3. And we will reach some sort of Scandinavian setup, right? Where black, where black puts uh, the pawn on c6. And it's extremely solid in that position. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to provide you with an extremely dangerous weapon. Uh, against uh, this black setup and we're gonna uh, be ready to sacrifice a whole piece in many many cases so I see a lot of people uh, good afternoon to Jetia, Jeremias, Mitran, Pradet, Kumar sorry for my pronunciation I guess that's an Indian name right and uh, so here we're gonna play knight f3 so let's see Takes, takes, bishop d7, knight f3, and bishop c6. And the main line by far is bishop d3 or knight g3. But here, I'm going to propose you this move, knight e to g5. An extremely dangerous move for black, because now this knight is targeting f7, e6. And here, black has several options. In most of them, we're going to sacrifice a piece in the next move. And it's completely playable and I played this line myself in a classical game with uh, big success, success, sorry. So, uh, what will you play here with the black pieces? I'm gonna ask you guys. So what do you think about this move? Bishop takes f3, which is very typical in this position. So when I get rid of this bishop on c6 and then play c6. <clears throat> so what do you think guy, about, uh, about the bishop f3? It's a very bad move, it's a very poor move, because after queen takes f3, there's a double attack on f7 and on b7, and basically, black has to resign. There's no proper way to protect both of them, right? So that's why bishop f3 is not a very good move. So now I'm going to ask you what happens after the move h6. What do you think about this move? It looks cool, because uh, the first glance, we could think that the only square for this knight is h3. Right? And therefore, the knight on h3 is basically doing nothing, right? So, what do we play here with the white pieces against this h6? It's actually a very bad move, but you gotta find, uh, you have to find the reason why. That's right, Hussein. Knight f7, this is just completely winning for white. So, uh, 
This is why there are many tricks in this position. So king f7, now knight e5, that's right. Now, no matter where you go, for example, you go to e7, there is knight g6, just winning the rook. And if you go to e8, we all know the answer, right? Queen h5, boom. And this is actually checkmate. Is this checkmate? I think. Checkmate in one, two, three, four moves. Can you spot the checkmate? So give me the whole variation. Yeah, forcing moves, cap captures, checks, and threats. By the way, I'm in Sweden because I'm going to play here the Swedish League and it's extremely cold here for Spanish, you know. It's freezing for me. I was in my uh, hot Granada in the south of Spain, still enjoying some good weather. And here in Sweden, it's just so freezing for me. So how do we checkmate Black spawning here? Come on, checkmate in four moves. It's not that difficult. Check, 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 checkmate. <laughs> so that's right. Queen f7, king d6. And now knight c4 check. Only square. Yeah, that's right. Paul. Paul is paying attention. So king d5, queen f3, king d4, and then bishop e3. This is just checkmate. So the, the king made a fantastic journey from e8 to d4, and now it's going to be checkmated. So that's why h6 is just a terrible move. And so many people, like 20 games at least in my database, they went in this uh, in this position for the move knight to f6. What do you think about this move? Looks like a natural uh, development move. Just uh, intend to bring some pieces, but it's actually a losing move as well. Hi, Luis. Good to see you around here. So knight of six also terrible for black because uh, yeah that's right Hussein Hussein is very strong today knight e5 and I guarantee you that if you play this line a lot in blitz games or even rapid games some people are gonna fall for this trick I mean in my database even in classical games uh, 2100 players they just played knight f6 and they resigned after knight e5 because there's no way of stopping knight f7 just winning a very important pawn tacking the rook on h8 with a fork on d8 so basically Black has to resign in this position. Okay, so knight f6, not a good move. h6, just losing. Bishop f3, just losing. So in this position, there are other options. For example, bishop d6. Sorry, bishop d6, bishop e7, and knight d7. These three are the main moves. So let's start by bishop d6. So, what do you think we're going to play in this position? Would you sacrifice on f7? Would you just play Khan with bishop d3? Or what candidates, what candidate moves do you have in your mind in this position? What's up, Jorge? Best regards from Sweden. And uh, would you take on f7? Or would you just uh, develop a piece and then try to go for short castle or even bishop d3, queen e2, and then aim to go for long castle in this position? Knight f7. Okay, knight f7, it's the move that we're going to recommend and it's very, very playable. And again, it's extremely hard for black to defend in this position. So knight f7, king takes f7, only move, and now king g5. And basically, black has two main options here, king e8 and king e7. Probably you would think that king e7 is the best move in this position because it protects the e6 pawn and uh, hopefully your opponents will think the same because king e7 is in fact uh, a little bit worse than king e8. So let's start with king e7 and now we have to develop pieces attacking our opponent's weaknesses. So how do we develop pieces and at the same time we attack our uh, main opponent's weakness, which is, of course, e6. If we manage to enter in that square, it will be very, very painful for black in this position, right? And imagine a knight on e6 just controlling everything, targeting g7. So that's that's why we developed the bishop to c4. Very, very good, Mithran. Bishop c4, we are now attacking the pawn on e6. And here black has two options. The first one is bishop d5. The second is bishop d7. So let's start by checking bishop uh, d7, which is 
not the best move in this position because we just go short castle and after h6 what are we supposed to play here in this position now that we have castled we're gonna bring some pieces to the e file right and this is very important whenever there is a king on the on the e file which is not castled we're gonna uh, put some pressure in this e file right yeah jorge jimenez that's right 96 using this pin on the e file so after bishop e6 we can just play rook e1 right and then after knight f6 we just play bishop e6 and even though this king escapes by a c8 after some move like c4 we have full compensation for the sacrifice piece because we have two pawns for the piece we got the bishop pair which is extremely important in chess and also our king is safe and uh, what else well we have uh, more space in this position and actually the en the engines say that uh, white is much better in this position so if you don't trust me i can understand that you don't, you don't trust this stupid spanish guy you can trust the engine and the engine says white is much better in this position there are many ideas here you can try to go c5 you can try to go d5 reinforcing this bishop on e6 i like c5 and then bring this bishop to f4 for example then queen d3 communicating the rooks the g6 square is very very weak and it's not easy for black to play yeah because the, this rook is not coming to the action and whenever you play g5 you're you know pushing too too high your pawns on the king side and basically uh, i i would take white uh, definitely in this position right so what about queen e2 instead of short castle so very interesting question from kusein queen e2 that's a very decent move but i guess now i can just play king f8 and the thing is uh, whenever you take on e6 let's say bishop e6 here you can just play queen e7 and now the king is still in the center and you're gonna go h6 so i think this is not the best way to go for the white pieces but definitely queen e2 is another idea in this kind of positions yeah we want to put pressure on e6 but it makes more sense that just to, to go short castle and then knight e6 is gonna come anyway and your king is safe on g1 so there's no trade of queens in any case the attack is very strong as jorge is suggesting okay uh, so this is a very interesting repertoire guys so maybe after this uh, video lecture you can go and take the notes for example in the pgn and it will not take you more than half an hour and then you will have a nice preparation uh, for your tournaments yeah that's right jorge short castle brings another piece into the attack the rook not only the queen so we have two heavy pieces putting pressure on e6 which is nice Okay, so we were saying, so bishop d6, knight f7, king f7, knight g5, king e7, and now bishop c4, and we analyze the move bishop d7. How about bishop d5? And now I, wanna, I, I want you to calculate 4c moves against captures, checks, and threats. And here there is uh, a way where white can win an exchange very easily, just with 4c moves, yeah? I'm going to be insisting like hell. Uh, in all this but it's quite quite important you know it's like my mom whenever i i travel abroad come on pepe pepillo she calls me pepillo <laughs> which means small pepe yeah i i'm 33 years old you know but spanish moms they they won't change you know so she calls me pepillo and she asks me to wear a jacket you know M mom i know i know i have to wear a jacket yeah she tells me don't forget to wear a jacket so it's the same with forcing moves so what do you play here with the white pieces? Georgi Kalatots Billy. I guess you're from Georgia, right? Bishop d5. That's right. E takes d5. And now... And now what? Again, 4c moves. Queen e2. That's, that's great. Jorge. And uh, yes, if black kings goes to f6, there is checkmate on e6, right? If black goes to f8, there is a fork on e6. So only move basically is king d7. And now you can just play queen e6 check. This king has to go for a tour to c6 to visit some caves. And now knight f7 just wins an exchange, right? Let's say queen f6 takes, takes, and knight h8. There's nobody that can stop this knight going back uh, by f7. Um, so basically white is winning. So that's why there is another try for black here. 
Black can try to hold the position after bishop takes d5. And I'm gonna give you the option to find best Black's move in this position, which is not e takes d5, but an intermediate move. So let's see if you guys find this move. Yes, Luis Rey Castillo, bishop b4 check, that's fine. Intermediate move. And here we're going to propose bishop d2, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, and queen takes d5. So it looks like black managed to hold, because uh, now e6 is sort of protected, and we have just uh, one pawn uh, in return for the piece. So we're going to uh, do something. We're gonna, we have to play extremely dynamically in this position, what means open files using the fact that this king is still in the center and there is a very nice move in this position. So what would you play here with the white pieces? As I'm telling you, you go knight f3, just play very shy, so black is gonna uh, bring uh, his pieces out, knight f6, knight d7, rook e8, and then black is going for an artificial castle and uh, we'll have some troubles. So, okay, there are different uh, normal moves in this position for white c3 c3 is the kind of move that you don't want to play because we said we had to react instantaneously and dynamically open files bring pieces to the action c3 is just a very calm move that just protects upon a d4 so i wouldn't go for this but uh nice suggestion sure castle is definitely a move it's definitely a move that you have to consider. More candidate moves, guys. Sure, castle. Yeah, that's right. Mithran. I like the move you suggest. C4. Very, very nice move. So we want to open the C file. And now black has three options. The first one is just to take on G2, which is losing in the spot because of long castle. And now we have so many, so many interesting options. We can bring the rook to the E file. We can play D file to open the E file. And just uh, just very good for us. So queen g2 just loses immediately. There's another option, which is queen takes e4. And I guess we all know the answer here, which is rook c1, of course. Now we want to use the fact that this pawn on c7 is very, very tasty. It has a curry sauce, and we just want to swallow it. So let's say the black plays queen d5. And now rook c5, very nice intermediate move. And I want to ask you what happens if black takes on g2. So white plays and wins. Now we can't go long castle, right? Not anymore. So, but there is a very nice move in this position. And uh, forget about material, yeah? We have to be aggressive in this position try to enter in black's position rook c7 well rook c7 it's it's all right but then after knight d7 i think black is fine because after queen b4 check we got king f6 so no rook c7 is actually losing so a better move we have to use the fact that all black pieces are in the background queen f4 it's, uh, well, queen f4, you can just play queen takes h1, king d2, and knight f6. And again, not clear. So, this is the weakest point. If we attack this guy, and imagine a queen landing on e6, then black will suffer checkmate, right? So, yeah, that's right, Luis Rey, fantastic, queen e3. That's a great move, because now... If, white if black takes the rook on h1, king d2, there's no way of stopping queen e6. Now, you cannot go queen c6, you cannot go back with queen d5, and then after queen e6, black has to resign. So let's check, for example, knight d7, we can just take, and king d8 only move, just knight f7, and queen e8 checkmate. So queen e3, sacrificing a whole rook. So... That's why queen g2 is losing, because of this queen e3, fantastic variation. So, uh, we checked we checked uh, queen g2, so the only move for black here is queen d7. And now, again, improve our pieces. Now, e6 is protected, so probably we had to find another square. So, f7 is a tasty square, and remember, we can combine... 
threats. For example, attacking c7 and uh, the square f7. So what is the move that tackle attack sorry both outputs? What's up, Ingen Staff? How are you doing, man? Everything all right? Enjoying life? Enjoying the winter? Winter is coming. Winter is coming. I hate winter, you know? So my main target in life is to be able to stay in flip-flops like eight months per year. So last year, we were traveling to Latin America to, to, to give some exhibitions, simuls and conferences. But this year is uh, just impossible, right? Because coronavirus. That's right. QWERTY, Rama, Nicolás, Mr. Toy Potent, Toti Potent. <laughs> uh, so Queen F4. That's right. And now let's say Black plays C6. And now just Rook E5, followed by Rook E6. Still, I will take White in this position. So let's say after Short Castle. Short castle, and uh, I would take white in this position because we just won the queen, right? Even if black takes on e5, just d takes c5, and if black takes, uh, black plays, sorry, knight b to d7, rook e6, and it's true that black has uh, one rook and two pieces, but we got one more pawn, and this king is actually uh, in the middle of, of the board, right? So we got ideas like queen e3, and after king f7, we got queen b3 and take on b7. So what I mean is we're going to get some more material. And if you guys check the engines, they say this is also very, very interesting for white. So, 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 so black, uh, if black takes on C4, it's going to be very, very risky. So there are other choices for black in this position. So queen D7. And here we just go long castle and again. It's not uh, an immediate checkmate or something like that, right? But one half has to smell, to smell the position, right? <laughs> to call it uh, like that. Because now, I mean, we don't need to know that we're going to checkmate black skin in like in 10 moves. But we uh, should know that we have enough contemplate with just analyzing the position. Because we got the E file, this skin is still in the center. My king is extremely safe on C1. And uh, when this rook comes to the E file... Now, e6 is going to suffer again. Also, the e5 square for the knight is very, very tasty, right? Uh, if you can't smell, you are probably positive. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Onkar. So, yeah. So, bishop b4 intermediate move. Okay, so I think we're done with this king e7 variation. But we still have to analyze after knight takes f7, king takes f7, knight g5, king e8. And here, we're going to take this pawn on e6. And basically, black has two main options. What would you play here with the black pieces? If you had to choose, let's say, two moves, what would you play here with the black pieces? Queen d7, okay. Queen d7 is one of your suggestions, which is actually losing because of bishop c4. Queen f6, that's a main line, Omkar. And there is another main line in this position, which is maybe the most natural move. You protect g7, and that's right, Mr. QWERTY, you pin this knight on e6. So let's start checking this e7. Uh, this queen is seven. Sorry. Just uh, to remember you guys that after this uh, lecture, we're going to have another lecture where we are analyzing games of the week. And I'm going to show you one of the most instructive games in the last months. It's Carlsen versus Study from uh, Norway Chess from the last round. Probably you guys are also following Norway Chess and uh, they are playing the ninth round, I believe, right now in Norway. So there's actually uh, Carlsen versus Firuza going on. Carlsen is leading the tournament and the uh, Iranian kid is uh, just second. And now he's already, I think, number 17th in the world. So what a player, right? Okay. Who do you think uh, will win? Firuza or Carlsen? I think uh, Firuza has the white pieces today. And uh, I was just checking the line before I came with you guys here to this lecture. And uh, the open is quite interesting. So anything can happen, right? And in tie breaks as well. 
As I told you uh, the other day in one of these lectures, like uh, Virut takes uh, is a very strong player in in rapid in rapid chess. So anything can happen in case of an uh, Armageddon. So queen e7, so bishop c4, developing a piece, preparing for short castle and bringing another piece to the e file. Bishop d7, and this actually corresponds to a game between one of my best friends, uh, Ibarra Jerez, grandmaster from Spain. He went for short castle. He was playing an Indian player in the Spanish tournament in 2016. Okay, so short castle, bishop e6, bishop e6, and queen f6. Of course, you can't really take this bishop on e6 because of rook e1, right? And there is a pin. So queen f6 in order to develop this knight to e7. Rook e1 from Ibarra, knight e7. And this king is always in trouble because this bishop is doing a fantastic job stopping blacks uh, from castle on the castle in, sorry, on the king side or queen side. And here, again, what do you play with the white pieces? Give me a move, guys. Give me a move. Actually, you can get a pawn with a sequence of two moves. Para ba 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 ba, pere be 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 be, tara tara tara. So, again, forcing moves. I'm gonna be insisting on this like hell. Bishop c8. Bishop c8 is. Quite strange, but it's interesting actually. It's very interesting. So let's say I can play knight d7, bishop b7, and I guess you gave black uh, too many tempi, but very, very interesting. Maybe this is also good for, for white. I like that. I like that actually. So bishop c8 probably was a very good move. And also queen h5, queen b5. That's, that's right, nice music. Queen h5, this was the game, g6, and queen b5. Forcing moves, checks, very simple chess. So, in the game, queen h5, they went queen g6 and queen b5 anyway. And here, knight b to c6, and Ibarra went for an intermediate move, bishop f5, attacking the queen. And after queen f6, we can develop another piece, and creating some tricks and traps. So here, why to play? I like that you guys are being so interactive. This always makes the, the class more fun. And I feel like I'm not crazy, you know? <laughs> when I started working in Chess24, uh, like six years ago or something, I was living in Germany. I was doing my PhD in the Hamburg University. So we started doing commentary on top events in Spanish and there was nobody following the commentary because, uh, I mean, the web was new, right? And uh, so imagine talking for six hours nonstop with nobody watching you. Probably we had like two people. One was my mom and the other was my mom's uh, colleague. So I felt like a crazy man, right? Just talking alone in front of a camera for six hours, nobody listening. <laughs> yeah, B bishop g5 just for fun. That's right, because black can take on g5 because there is bishop d7, and then we grab the queen. The game continued with a6, queen b7, queen g5, queen a8, and knight d8, and Ibarra ended up winning this game because now it's got like a rook and uh, three pawns for two pieces and the king in the center. So basically, white was much, much better. Okay, so this is the line after queen e7. The other option for black here is to go queen f6, which is the most played variation. And here, bishop c4, just defending this knight on e6 and knight e7. <clears throat> okay. So here we continue with bishop g5, attacking the queen, developing with a tempo, and queen g6, and queen e2. What are we threatening after queen e2? Let's say, for example, that black plays h6, which is a terrible move. How do we win the game here? So why to play and win in this position? Very simple chess again. Yeah, 
we are not discovering the fire here, right? We are not discovering fire. Knight c7. Knight c7. You still have king d7, though. And after knight a8, I just take this bishop, and then it's not clear that this knight is going out. But more simple than that. Jorge Jimenez is too strong today. And, uh, yeah, you are right. Bishop e7 just wins. Because now after king e7, there is knight f4. Well, knight f4, I'm not so sure. Because knight f4, you got queen e4. So I guess you can play, yeah, knight f4, queen e4, and I guess knight g6. Yeah, this is also enough. But uh, what I mean, that after bishop e7, now knight c7 just uh, wins. But also, just long castle, and then this king is very, very bad placed. And we are not in a hurry, actually, to take on c7. I mean, basically, anything is just winning in this position, right? Okay. So, bishop g5, queen g6, queen e2, and queen e4. Now, of course, black is intending to exchange queens, but... The problem is that g7 is hanging. So knight takes g7, king d8, and this position, even though black managed to trade queens, I think white is much better again. Let's say bishop c2, rook c1, bishop g6, and f4. And uh, again, this king is in the center. And then we got these ideas with f5, f6. If you guys check this with the engine, it says it's uh, just a decisive advantage for white. Okay, so we I think we're almost done with this bishop d6 variation. So let's go to check the last two main options for black. The first one is bishop e7 here. And now the question. I said to you that we're going to sacrifice in almost every uh, variation after knight g5. But now my question is, would you take on f7 right now? Would you take on f7? Is it working, the sacrifice, right now? Or is it just uh, rubbish? Somebody called me. Oh, my tax advisor. This is never good news. You know? My tax advisor is just calling me. Well, I'll talk to him later. So, would you sacrifice on f7? Rubbish. 95 better. Well, 95 just uh, just loses. Well, you got. I mean, it's interesting because you got queen h h5. But I guess after g6, you gotta trade queens, and this is not our main idea. But very interesting. But no, the point is after knight takes f7, king takes f7, 95. Now black goes simply to f8. Now the f8 square is available. And basically, after queen h5, there's always queen e8 or bishop e8. And there's also knight f6 in case you give a check on the f file. So basically, this is just losing for white. So this is the only case where we are not going to be able to sacrifice. And then we have to play a little bit more calm. More calm, sorry. So bishop e7. And here, we're just going to play bishop d3. Now, again, black has several options. Knight d7 is one of them, but also different options. For example, h6. Again, this is just a terrible move because of... Boom! Knight f7. Black has weakened the light squares, and also this knight is joining the party. There is a nice salsa party on the e5 square, and also on the light squares. So king f8 and knight g6 just getting the rook. If the king goes to e8, now, boom, queen h5, and then this is going to end in checkmate. Okay, so h6 is not possible, as usual, in these kind of positions. Also, for example, bishop f3. How do we take on f3? We take with the knight or with the queen? you got to decide. I mean, I hope there's nobody saying that he wants to take with the pawn, right? Because this is just losing in the spot because of bishop g5, and then... We're going to cry. So, taking with the knight, which is not bad, of course. Or taking with the queen. Attacking f7 and also b7. That's right, Omkar. Queen f3 is much stronger. I mean, knight f3 is not bad. These positions are also very playable for, for white. We got the bishop pair. White is a little bit better. But the point is, after queen f3... 
Basically, uh, black is in real trouble because f7 is under attack and after bishop g5, we just take on g5. And now black has to take on g5 and b7 is just hanging and the rook on a8 falls which, uh, with a bit advantage for white. And if black goes, let's say, queen c8, then we can just open the position, blow everything up in the center, open the position for this couple of monsters, right? And this is just, uh, well... Bishop f5, for example, knight d7, and long castle, and no one's gonna save this poor guy in the center of the board. Okay, so bishop f3, not a very good idea for black in this position either. So what else after bishop d3? Well, knight d7 is the main move, but also let's check some other options. We check h6, also bishop f3. Bishop g5, we can try to transpose to the same line after taking on g5. And now after bishop f3, just queen f3, same position. And after knight f6, again, we just go short castle, bishop f3 and queen f3. And it's true that black survives, but we got the bishop pair and a very nice position. Okay, so after bishop d3, still... Knight d7 is the best move, I believe. There is also the possibility for black to go knight f6, but we have already said what happens after knight f6. Although in this case, it's just not winning immediately, right? So, what do we play if black goes knight f6? Come on, guys, tell me. You want some cookies? Sir, are there any opening transpositions into the Fort Knox? I believe this is just the only way to, to get into the Fort Knox. e4, e6, d4, d5, and knight d2 or knight c3. Black takes on e4 and then bishop d7, bishop c6. Yeah, knight e5 is the best move here in this position because what black wants to do, black wants to go short castle on h6, and send our guy to h3. So we play knight e5, attacking f7, short castle, and then we just go short castle. Black can never take this pawn on d4 because of bishop takes h7, and then the queen is hanging. So if black goes h6, now we just go knight f3. And we have a nice setup here. For example, let's say bishop b4, bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, and queen e2, and we have Better position because we have a nice space advantage. We can develop very easily with bishop f4, rook a d1, c4, rook f2 e1, h3, for example. And also we have some attacking ideas related by sacrificing on h6. This rook can join the party on the third rank in some positions. What I mean is this is just very easy and healthy to play with the white pieces. Okay, so nine f6. And finally, we come to check the main line with knight d7 and short castle. Almost everybody is playing here queen e2, but I think short castle is good enough for an advantage. So this is why I recommend you, I'm going to recommend you this, this move, which is very natural, of course. And uh, knight f6, it's a very bad move again. So here black has several options, h6, bishop f3. And uh, I think this is all. So knight f6. Let's start with this. Come on, guys. Give me your best move here for white. As you can see, in many positions, the sacrifice works. So that's why it's so tricky for black to play. Because black has to pay attention all the time to this sacrifice on f7. Knight e5 now is not that good because of knight takes e5 sorry and knight d7 and black's fine e5 is under attack now the knight on g5 is under attack so nope knight e5 is not the best move mithran okay knight to f7 king f7 knight g5 sorry king g8 and knight takes e6 and this position is better for white again let's say rook e1 Bishop d6 and bishop f5. And look at this position. The king is on g8. The queen is on c8. 
very, very passive. Whenever the queen wants to join the party on e8, there is a rook on e5, on e1, so reminding her that uh, that's not a good square. We got ideas with bishop g5, we got ideas with c4 and c5, with c4 and d5. Again, this is just a dream, right? For the white pieces. Okay, so knight f6, not a very good move again. And therefore, we said there are two more options. For example, bishop f3, knight takes f3. Here, it's just not possible to take with the queen because of the bishop takes g5. Now, the knight is already on d7, so taking on b7 doesn't make any sense because now black can just move the rook or even queen g8 and everything is well protected, right? So, in such positions, uh, Omkar is saying, such positions from knight d7, Karo, even if Sack goes wrong, it's still difficult for black at least hour 11. That's completely right. I mean, what I mean is, even though the engine says 0.00, uh, that implies that the position is extremely hard to play uh, for black pieces because even though black is material up, the engine says 0.00, .00 and in many cases with only one move or with a couple of moves. Okay, some, somebody is writing in Chinese, right, in the chat. Still, my Chinese is not very good. Even though I used to live with a Chinese guy with my masters in Italy, his name was Wei Wan, and we used to call him Juanito. He was a very, very funny guy. He taught me some Chinese. For example, Wokola. That means I'm hungry. Wokola. I'm thirsty. Or the other way around. Right? <laughs> okay, so after bishop f3, now we gotta take with the knight and then reach these kind of positions where black is solid, but we're just better because we got the bishop pair. For example, knight f6. Queen e2, short castle, c3, c5, and bishop f4, and uh, after bringing a rook to d1, this is a little bit better for white. This corresponds to a game between Paco Vallejo, which is our Spanish number one. He's a 2700 player, number 30 in the wall, more or less. So very strong. Okay. At amateur player, an, an, at amateur level, nobody almost plays bishop d7. There are many people who plays this Fort Knox variation. I mean, I've found, uh, I played like at least five to six classical games with the white pieces against, uh, against uh, the Fort Knox and with players with average 2100, 2200. So some people, and of course we cannot cover the whole thing. Yeah, chess is so big that... In many cases, just to have a repertoire against uh, everything is just nonsense, right? Okay, so um, we were analyzing this variation, short castle and h6. And now it doesn't work, the sacrifice, because after king f7, the e5 square is well covered from this knight on d7. And we cannot continue with knight e5 followed by queen h5. So it's not a good business to take on f7. That's why we have to assume that sacrifice not working and just go back to e4. Let's say knight f6, knight takes f6, knight f6, and probably this is one of the most solid lines for black uh, against this knight e to g5. Probably bishop e7 is the best way, and this is the only variation that doesn't allow white to take on f7. So c3, sure castle, rook e1, and as I told you, this bishop is a little bit clumsy. So in many positions, black wants to, to, to trade for the knight on f3. Queen takes f3, c5, cd, dc, sorry, bishop c5 and bishop f4. Um, even though position is solid for black, I will take the white pieces. We got a nice majority on the queen side, three versus two for the end games could be very interesting and also the bishop pair. So if I will, if I had to choose, I will take the white pieces without any doubt. All right, so let's analyze the last move and main line, which is knight d7. And here we are gonna sacrifice again on f7. The engine will say that black can survive, but with very, very uh, strong moves and unique moves in many cases. So king f7, and of course, knight to g5. Check. And here, what do you think is the best move for black? Q4, 
King e8 or King e7? What would you play with the black pieces here? You got 10 seconds to decide. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. You're gonna play King e8 or King e7. One is good, the other one is not good. <laughs> This is what, why I'm saying this line is so tricky for black because, I mean, it's very tough to decide here. King e8, king e7, yeah, Omkar says king e8, Mitran says king e7, well, the best move is king e8. King e7 is just losing. So that's why I like so much this line. Because in many positions, in many cases, your opponent will fall for the trap. So, king e7... It's very bad because of bishop c4. And we are just taking this guy on e6. Black cannot stop that. If bishop d5, I believe we can just take and queen e2. So knight f6, knight e6, queen e8, and short sure castle. And after rook e1, black is going to struggle a lot in this position. The king cannot hide on d8. The king cannot hide on f7 because of this diagonal. I mean, in conclusion, this is just a disaster for black, right? That's right, Luis. King e8 seems the safest on e7 is so exposed. I completely agree with you. So, king e8. And here, bishop d3. We're going to play this move. What is our threat? Well, we are threatening to go queen h5 in this position and just wins. For example, let's say black does something stupid. a6. Now, queen h5. g6. Baboom. Bishop takes g6. And queen g6. King e7 and checkmate on e6. So black has to parry that threat. And black has several options here in this position after bishop d3. One option is knight g to d to f6. The other option is knight d to f6. The other option is queen f6. And finally g6. Let's start with the move g6, which is a terrible move because of knight e6, queen e7, and guess what? Short castle, of course, because now black can take this knight on e6, and rook e1 is coming, and troubles for black. So g6, terrible move. Let's start with knight g to f6, which is also losing. After short castle, b7, knight takes e6, queen c8, and knight takes g7, and we got Enough material for the sacrifice piece, right? The king is still exposed. So basically, this is just very good for white. All right. So the best two moves for black here are queen f6 and knight d to f6. Let's start with queen f6, which is maybe the move that makes more sense because it stops queen h5 in the sense that now g6 is going to be possible because the queen is just protecting that square. And also it's covering e6. So now we're going to continue with queen e2, putting some pressure, and let's say bishop d6. Now we can take on e6, and again, troubles for black. For example, if knight d2 e7, we just play bishop g5, and after queen f7, only move bishop c4, and again, some threats, knight c7. The engine says that the only move here available for black is bishop king f7. And now after bishop c4, this looks almost winning for white. But black has this move, knight b6. And you can check this with the engine. It said that it's around equal. But I wouldn't want to be in the black's hands in this position. It's just so dangerous. For example, you can always have a repetition if you want. Knight g5, king f8, knight e6. But you can also play for the win with the move bishop b3. Okay. So, queen f6, and let's check the last option with knight d to f6. Sorry, guys, one sec. Just opening the chat here. Again, it was closed. So, knight d to f6, and again, queen e2. Also, knight e6 is very interesting, followed by short castle. Right? But, queen e2, and now... Queen d7, for example. Yeah, different options for black. Queen e7, knight e7, bishop d6, sorry, and uh, queen d7. For example, if black goes bishop d6, we can just go short castle, 
And again, next move probably is going to be rook e1. At some point, we're going to take on e6. This bishop can come to c4. And in practice, it's very tough for black to defend. Saint applies after queen e7. We can continue with short castle. King d7. Rook e1. King c8 trying to hide that king. And now knight e6. And again, you don't need to know uh, how to continue in these positions. You just need to know that you have enough compensation for the piece. You have a strong knight on e6. All black pieces are in the background. c4 and d5 are coming. Just uh, attacking this bishop, reinforcing the knight on the e6. This bishop can be developed via g5, also f4, putting pressure on c7. And in general, this is very tough to play with the black pieces. Okay. So, knight e7, which doesn't look like the most natural move, right? Queen e6, queen d7, and again, share castle. Same ideas. Rook e1, c4, d5. The king cannot escape from the from the center right because you cannot castle because you took already pawn on f7 uh, last move queen d7 you can just play short castle and again same 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 stuff let's say bishop d6 and c4 which threat uh, uh, threatens d5 right and i wouldn't like to be in blacks in black's hands in this position so basically, this is all. This is all what I wanted to show you. This is my repertoire against this line. So I'm not hiding anything. This is all I analyzed. This was uh, hours of work. And I would be very, very happy if you guys can use this weapon in some of your games. And I would be very happy if after using this repertoire, what we just checked here, uh, you guys text me a message in my uh, social media, for example, in Instagram. I would be very happy also to answer any kind of questions that you have related to this variation. I'm always uh, eager to help you guys. And uh, there's nothing that makes me more happy than to, uh, getting to know that somebody has used uh, some of the lines uh, that I uh, shared with you in, in, a, in a classical tournament. So just remember, just play knight a3, knight g5, and almost against any move, just take on f7, just play knight g5, then bishop c4, just bring the pieces, put pressure on e6, don't be afraid. Black is uh, the one that has to be afraid, and mainly because you have prepared this line, you have checked all these lines, and you know more than your opponent does. And uh, only move where we cannot go crazy is bishop e7, we're going to be more calm, bishop d3, queen e2, knight e4, and then play this kind of position, which is also more than healthy. Okay, guys, so we're going to make... Uh, a little stop of let's say five minutes and then we're gonna come back to check one of the games between Magnus Carlsen and Arian Tari from Norway Chess. I guarantee you this is this was one of the most instructive games. Uh, actually the title that we gave to this uh, game was Norwegian Char Torture. So Magnus Carlsen doing his stuff. Okay guys, thanks for being here and see you in five minutes don't run away take just some soda some popcorns and see you and thanks for being so interactive see you guys if you drink don't drive <laughs>